now on, five and one house will be divided. Three against two, and two against three. A little bit hard to see how that's good news. This may be one of those Gospels that we need to hear, but don't want to hear. But it's not difficult to just look around us and see, well, Jesus has a point, whether we like it or not. There is absolutely a tremendous amount of division in our world, and really, I can't think of a point in history where we couldn't say that. Even the so-called Pax Romana was anything but Pax for a lot of the people who were under it. But I'm going to suggest that in spite of the tone of today's gospel, Jesus' statement is not him saying that he came to bring that division, so much as an indictment and a diagnosis of the human condition into which he was already stepping. To paraphrase, perhaps what he was saying is, when God shows up, when God is in in human form or in the form of something that you can actually sink your teeth into, you can see and smell and touch, when that happens, there's going to be division. There's going to be controversy. Things are going to get roiled up. And this really shouldn't surprise us terribly much. What happens if you're in one of those moments when you're pretty confident that the Spirit of God has just set you on fire. You've got that joy. You've got that enthusiasm. You've got that sense of rightness, like not self-righteousness, but true, well-balanced, happy rightness. And you walk into a room, and you begin in your words and your body language and your actions to express that. Does everybody get up and applaud? I don't know about you, but I sure haven't had that experience. Maybe a few do, but a lot of people begin to shrink back, the shoulders tense up. Things get divided. So we can only imagine when the true God in the flesh shows up in the form of Jesus, how he must have experienced that phenomenon. But there is good news in this reading. And the good news is something that we have to use our imaginations to project onto the end because we only heard the diagnosis and indictment part today. But we sort of heard in Hebrews a little bit of an illusion of what comes after that. And that is, yes, this division, this fire, this baptism that we heard about in the gospel, it is something that we, if we truly wish to follow in the footsteps of our Lord and belong to the eternal God must pass through, but we pass through it on the way to perfection. It's not the end, it's only the middle part of the journey. So if that's the case, it calls us to do something completely counterintuitive. What's our intuition when we sense a situation that's going to turn tense, it's going to turn controversial, it's going to turn divisive. Doesn't instinct say, pull back? That stove is hot, don't touch it. But I think today's gospel says, no, 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 don't pull back. Lean right on in. Lean in with force and with enthusiasm. Because this is the pathway to perfection. So what does it look like to lean into division? Well, let's think about some very concrete and recent examples. Since I've been here at St. Bartholomew's, in fact, I remember it was either right before I arrived or within weeks of arriving, there was the shooting at the Orlando nightclub over in Florida. It was about three years ago. And since then, regrettably, there have been many other events of a similar nature that have come to our attention. And the first instinct of not only our church, but the wider community of Livermore and all of its different faith assemblies 
progressive liberal and walking into an environment where conservatism is absolutely the understood norm of conversation, or vice versa. Now, in today's partisan climate, this sounds like crazy talk, but it's what leaning into division really looks like. And here is where the work gets really hard. Because the first instinct in situations like that is prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for what you're going to say, how you're going to defend your position, how you're going to explain yourself. But Jesus actually says that if you're walking into a situation where you truly wish to carry and express the Spirit of God, you are to prepare no defense. Often, we are to be silent. What would it be like to walk into a situation like that simply with the purpose of listening and understanding? If you speak, you speak neutral questions. And you only express where you happen to stand when explicitly asked to do so. And even then, in rather measured and limited terms. Completely counterintuitive, but it's leaning into division. And then, then something even harder is likely to happen. And this is the one where I believe leaning into it truly helps us transcend into that perfection of which the letter of the Hebrew spoke today. If you're there long enough, and if you've really listened well, and if you're obviously a trustworthy and non-threatening presence, even though you are quite obviously different from what happens to be the norm in that space, eventually the frustration, the anger, the rancor that made all this division happen in the first place is going to bubble up. 
once again, but perhaps for the first time, among those five and one household. Because guess what? Ultimately, and we know this is the dream of Scripture, it's just one household, period. There are no separate households in the human sphere. We all belong to the same one. We may indeed be painfully divided, but it is all one household. And in those moments, you get a glorious glimpse of that. You've passed through the fiery trial. You've gone through everything that the saints and prophets that the writer of the Hebrews was talking about, and you have begun the ascent into the perfection that the pioneer and perfecter of our faith has prepared for us. So folks, my encouragement for you today is look at this divided world. Don't resist it. Let it be what it is. Find the places in your immediate sphere where perhaps